Before we get started today, I'd like to inform you all that I have created a Discord server for my channel. You'll have to bear with me for a while as I learn how to expand it, but there is a link in the description if you are interested. Lastly, I would like to thank all of my viewers who have been supporting this channel as we continue to make content. Now, on to your regular scheduled video. Nineteen seventy seven. William Sanford Nye, more commonly known as Bill Nye, originally started as an engineer for the 747 airline in Boeing, Seattle. While working on the airline, Bill entered a Steve Martin lookalike competition in 1978 that was hosted by Warner Brothers Records. With Nye winning the lookalike competition, it opened his eyes to a whole new career path, the entertainment industry. Following the Steve Martin contest, Nye began performing stand-up comedy in his spare time. This led to him meeting two fellow comedians, Ross Schaefer and John Kiester, who were both very well-known writers for the sketch comedy show Almost Live. In 1985, Nye had left his job at Boeing in order to join Schaefer and Kiester in writing and performing on the show. During his time on the show, Nye began developing the science-explaining persona that we know to this day. The first appearance of this persona happened on an episode of Almost Live, where Bill Nye corrects Ross Schaefer's pronunciation of the word gigawatt. Schaefer responds to the correction by saying, Who do you think you are? Bill Nye the science guy? As a result of this, Nye was asked to scientifically answer call-in questions that the show received. Two years later, on January 10, 1987, a main guest performer had called to cancel their appearance. With no backup options to fill the time reserved for the guest, writers on the show had voted for Nye to fill the spot. Bill demonstrated the household uses of liquid nitrogen by fully submerging an onion into the liquid nitrogen before proceeding to smash it to pieces. The Science Guy's first appearance on Almost Live was extremely successful. For five more years, the Science Guy continued as a frequent segment on the show, all while Nye was developing his own show revolving around his sciencey persona. Nye proposed the idea of this show to King TV, the same broadcasting company that Almost Live was with, but unfortunately they declined his proposal. Nye tried multiple times to pitch his new Pee Wee Herman meets Watch Mr. Wizard TV show, even acquiring a few station alumni, James McKenna and Aaron Gottlieb, but were denied from Fox and various other broadcasting networks. Eventually, the group convinced Elizabeth Brock of PBS member station KCTS-TV to give the show a chance. KCTS commissioned a pilot episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy that aired on April 14, 1993 which then aired on the PBS station for the rest of the month. Following the pilot episode, the show had gotten the green light for its first season and aired on September 10, 1993, but only in syndication. Or in other words, they leased the right to multiple television stations without actually going through a broadcasting network. The first season had a total of 26 episodes, ending with the episode Food Web on March 25, 1994. After the success of season one, the show was renewed for a second 20-episode season, this time not in syndication, but through the public broadcasting service. Season two began airing on December 5, 1994, almost nine months after the first season concluded. Its final episode, Ocean Life, aired on April 28th of the next year, finishing off season two, only to be renewed again three more times. In total, there were six seasons of Bill Nye the Science Guy, coming out to 100 episodes if you exclude the pilot. The final episode of the series aired on February 5, 1999, two years after production had fully ended. The show quickly became a staple in many children's educations, with kids claiming Nye to be both smart and funny. With Nye's background in comedy, his way of delivering scientific lessons made it fun and memorable for anyone who watched it. The addition of cartoony sound effects and an MTV style of pacing made it easier for kids to learn while also watching an enjoyable show. Although the show focused on a younger viewer base, the quirky humor and accessibility attracted a large adult audience like school teachers who were able to use the show as a teaching tool in class. Thousands of schools in the US used Bill Nye as a way of teaching children the basics of science, and in turn, Bill Nye's theme song has become one of the most iconic songs in the last 30 years. Bill Nye the Science Guy! Bill Nye the Science Guy! Bill, 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 Bill! Bill Nye the Science Guy! Science rules! Bill Nye the Science Guy! Inertia is a property of matter. Seven seconds. 
After the show finished its final run-throughs, Bill Nye continued to use his acting skills in a plethora of different movies, including two episodes of Scooby-Doo and, oddly enough, a music video called Fortnite Rap Battle. Interesting. Nye has also created three more features revolving around his science persona, the first of which being The Eyes of Nye, releasing on April 3rd, 2005, followed by Bill Nye Saves the World, starting on April 21st, 2017, and lastly, the most recent one, The End is Nye, which started on August 25th of 2022. As of right now, there are no new updates as to what Bill Nye is doing, besides working as the CEO of the world's largest independent space interest group, the Planetary Society. Bill Nye will always hold a special place in my heart for teaching me most of the basic science that I know to this day. So with that being said, this is the end of the Bill Nye the Science Guy history. Don't forget to hit that like button and turn that red subscribe button gray. Thanks for watching guys, see ya!